You are looking at the 2021 rankings for the front-end frameworks the dev community is the most interested in. The survey is maintained by the State of JavaScript team and the results for 2022 are coming soon. I am terrible at predictions, but my guess is that Svelte and Solid will continue their rise. Furthermore, I expect Quick, a framework just released in 2022, to jump directly at the top of this chart. I am a big believer in this new wave of frameworks and in their ability to replace some of the big guys such as Angular or React. So, in this video, we'll take a quick look at the core features of Svelte, Solid and Quick, we'll see how they compare with each other and we'll try to understand why are they disrupting the front-end space. We will build a small movie app using the three frameworks and this will give us the chance to go through some of the common workflows such as building components, managing state, routing requests, handling events and more. Without further ado, let's start by looking at Svelte and its meta framework SvelteKit. I'll run this npm command in a terminal and we'll end up with the following project. In the top right corner, I'm linking a video where I'm looking at Svelte and SvelteKit in much more detail. Now, I'll just briefly mention that SvelteKit is built on top of Vite, it offers TypeScript support out of the box, and that will do most of our work in the route directory. File-based system routing is pretty much the de facto solution to handle routing these days, and all three frameworks we'll look at are following this pattern. Svelte imposes naming conventions for its routing files, so the page.svelte file under the routes directory will resolve the request to the root domain path. Compared to Quick and Solid, Svelte is a proponent of the single file component architecture, so your .svelte files will contain the TypeScript code, the template and the styling associated with your component. Back to the code, we can use Svelte head to update the page title and the metadata. This is useful for SEO purposes, especially since meta frameworks such as SvelteKit employ server-side rendering strategies, render components on a node backend and quickly serve static HTML to the client. In the script part of the component, let's make a call to a third-party movie API to retrieve a list of Christmas movies. A couple of things to note here. I am declaring a movies reactive variable which will trigger template changes whenever its value changes. Then I am making a find call in a non-mount lifecycle hook method. This is a common strategy to retrieve data for rendering purposes, but you'll see in a second that these days there are other options as well. So when the component is mounted in the DOM, a call is made to an API and the movie's value is populated. Let's see how we can render this information in the page next. While Solid and Quick make use of JSX, Svelte comes with its own templating language. We can use an each block to iterate over the movie list, while also proving a fallback for the case when the movies are not available yet. Working with templates is usually pretty self-explanatory. Svelte offers helpers to handle element classes, options to conditional rendering, and more. We'll define a link pointing to the movie details page, and then we'll register click handlers so that users can rate their movies. The vote event handler is straightforward. I am persisting the user's vote and then I'm forcing a re-render of the movie list. There is a more elegant way to do this by using Svelte's store, but I want to outline the following scenario. Our movie array value is reactive, but the values it contains are not. So making an update on one of the movies will not trigger DOM updates. The actual movie's reference needs to change for the DOM update to happen. Ok, next let's work on the movie's detail page component. To handle this movie detail request, we'll create the following structure under the routes directory. We have two files in here, a page.ts which will run on the server and load the necessary data and the page.svelte which will render the UI for our users. So, on the server, we'll fetch the movie details and return them from a load function. In the component, we are exporting a data value which will be populated by the framework with the results of the load function we just worked on. While not that intuitive, in Svelte, exported values are actually component properties. Finally, we can render the information on the page. Note that compared to a single page application which is client-side rendered, we are reaching the details page via regular links and these detail pages are actually rendered on the server. I didn't discuss styling, since it's not really the scope of this video, but note that you can easily use a preprocessor such as SAS and your CSS rules can be easily scoped. Next on our list is Quick. Of course, with its meta framework Quick City. If you didn't know by now, any respectable UI framework has a meta framework these days. So let's run the following npm command and we'll get this initial project as a result. Again, Vite and TypeScript are a must and the well-known routes directory is present here as well. You can find explanations for some of the other files in here in the video linked into the top right corner. And now let's write some code. 
A topic we didn't discuss while working with Svelte is layouts. Svelte supports them and Quick supports them as well. This is a straightforward solution to reuse parts of your UI. Quick also uses reserved names for its files and everything defined in the routes layouttsx will be inherited by the rest of the routes we'll work on. So all our pages will have a header component and the page contents will replace the slot element. Next, just like in Svelte, we'll map the request to the root path to the routes indextsx file. We can define the page title and the metadata by exporting a document head value. Quick comes up with a new concept called resumability. This means that the rendering of the component can start on the server and then continue on the client if needed. You will see a lot of dollar signs in the Quick code as well, since they are trying to always use lazy loading for performance gains. So anything containing a dollar sign will be packed in its own distribution file and will be only sent to the browser when the user clearly asks for it. The most common example here is an on-click event handler. There is no reason for the handler function to be sent to the client if the user will never click on that button. By applying this resumable architecture and by employing lazy loading strategies, Quick really excels when it comes to performance metrics. Back to the code, there are a couple of things I want to outline. First, note that we are wrapping the vote event handler method in a dollar sign function. This is a quick URL and it is necessary for the lazy loading part I explained a bit earlier. Second of all, we are loading the movies in a use client effect hook. Quick code can run both on the client and on the server, and this hook will ensure that the fetch call will only happen on the client. We'll see in a second a hook which can be environment agnostic. Third of all, we use a signal to handle component state, and finally, styling is a bit different compared to Svelte. We need to use the use style scoped method, which takes a list of CSS rules and scopes them for the current component. Next, let's work on the movie details page. Again, we are creating a routing structure that allows us to extract the past ID using the location hook. Then, in a use task hook, we are fetching the movie details. Code defined in this hook will run only once before the component is rendered, either on the server or on the client. Once the movie details are retrieved, we are simply using JSX to populate the page. The last library we'll look at is Solid and its Solid Start Meta Framework. By the way, if you are finding this type of content useful and you want to stay up to date with the dev space moving forward, please consider subscribing to the channel. Ok, so we'll run this terminal command and this is the project starter we'll get in return. V is here, TypeScript is here, and the routes directory is here as well. Out of all the frameworks we discussed, Solid is probably the one most similar to plain JavaScript. Its components are plain functions, so we'll just export the home function in the index.tsx file. You'll see a lot of similarities between these new frameworks. Solid Start is also built on top of file system based routing, so the details discussed earlier apply here as well. Solid's reactivity is one of its main strengths, and it is all built on top of signals. In the on mode lifecycle method, we'll fetch the movie list from the third party API and we'll use the setMoviesGetter to update the signal value. Signals are the actual component internal state, so whenever a change is detected here, the associated JSX template will be updated accordingly. As a quick side note, I didn't get a chance to discuss a pretty big shift in the way these new frameworks are handling rendering. For a long time, the virtual DOM abstraction was a necessity in order to ensure reliable fast DOM updates. Recently, however, building on top of smart architectures and leveraging more performant browsers, frameworks such as Solid or Svelte are able to gain better performance and smaller bundle sizes by ditching the virtual DOM altogether. Back to the code, Solid relies on JSX for rendering purposes, so there isn't anything revolutionary here. However, I want to mention a little caveat I know of thanks to you guys. Because Sally doesn't rely on a virtual DOM, rendering lists directly in JSX will actually recreate all elements every time a change is detected. As a result, you should always use components such as for or index to reliably and efficiently render your lists. With the movies page out of the way, let's now take a look at the movie details page. The following directory structure will ensure that we can correctly listen for the incoming request and that we can also extract the movie ID from the request path. Just like Quick and Svelte, Solid Start offers you the option to load the route data on the server and then populate your UI component. A route data function needs to be exported and the create route data function needs to be returned. Inside this function, we'll perform the fetch as usual. 
Then I am exporting the default function called movie and inside it, the result of the user of data hook is assigned to a movie value. Note that this is actually a solid resource, which is a wrapper around your async request. One of the main benefits of using resources is having access to a loading property. There are no special considerations for styling, so I'm simply using CSS modules with solid. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video to help me fight the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, thank you for watching.